March, March, March. <laughs>Hey guys, welcome back. It is the best time of the month once again. We have the book of the month selections for March. I am so excited to see what they've chosen this month. This is my like absolute favorite time because I love picking the or looking at the selections and then getting the book in the mail. It's my favorite. Before we dive into the selections, don't forget to go and vote on the book of the month poll that I have out there. You get to choose what book I'm picking for my spoiler talk for this month. So be sure to go Go vote in that poll. It is live for 24 hours. Okay, book of the month, show me what you got. So we have seven selections this month. Do keep in mind, I'm gonna go through all seven, but for the poll that I have out live currently, there only allows me to do five spots. So I'm gonna be picking the five that speak to me the most, um, but there are seven selections this month. Okay, first we have a historical fantasy. I don't feel like historical fantasy is like a genre that you see very often. It's kind of unique. The London Seance Society, repeat author. So I know, so it says it's from the author of The Lost Apothecary. I, from what I've seen, like scrolling through like Reddit, like on like book reddits and like um, book of the month, like subreddit, not very many people like that book. So I'm a little like hesitant about that one. Um, just because I know that everybody said for the lost, lost apothecary that like, oh, the premise was really good. It just like completely fell flat. I'm a little surprised they picked this unless like, you know, there's just like some people out there that are like really loudly saying that they didn't like the lost apothecary, but it was actually like pretty good. Okay. So this one, I really, really like the cover. I think it looks really cool. It looks very like gothic. Okay, there's our themes for the month. It's glamorous. It's 1873. At an abandoned chateau on the outskirts of Paris, a dark seance is about to take place, led by acclaimed spiritualist Valdine. <laughs> Here we go. We're just gonna call her V. Led by acclaimed spiritualist V, known worldwide for her talent in conjuring the spirits of murder victims to ascern the identities of the people who killed them. She is highly sought after by widows and investigators alike. Lena Wickles <laughs> has come to Paris to find answers about her sister's death. She must embrace the unknown and overcome her own logic-driven bias against the occult. When V is back into England to solve a high-profile murder, Lena accompanies her as an understudy. Okay. But as the women team up with the powerful men of London's exclusive seance society to solve the mystery, they begin to suspect that they are not merely out to solve a crime, but perhaps entangled in one themselves. I mean, yeah, you're putting yourself in the middle of this investigation, so you're gonna be entangled in it. Book contains mentions of sexual assault. That's good to know. I like that they add that in there. Or right now, it's a 3.84. Expected publication is either March 21st or March 7th. Sometime in March. Um, it's 352 pages, pretty basic. Like I said, I'm very hesitant about this one just because I know that like The Lost Apothecary didn't get a ton of love. I mean, it was a nominee for Goodreads Choice Awards, but that doesn't mean anything. Uh, 3.76, so pretty basic, but I just know that like, I don't know, I remember like reading a lot that people were not pleased with that one. So I'm, a, I'm very hesitant about this one. What's the next? All right, we have this like gothic looking um, theme kind of going on here. I'm kind of surprised. Oh, the soulmate. Okay, we'll get, we'll get to that. I'm excited by that. Okay, Wayward, I have seen this kind of floating around because I really like the cover. Um, okay, so magical realism, an ode to the natural world and female power in this lush generation spanning novel is equal parts daring and inspiring. Uh, multiple viewpoints, feminist, magical, and nature. <laughs> It's a weird, the tag nature. Like, what does that mean? Okay, another one with sexual assault. Um, I am a wayward and wild inside. 2019, under the covers of darkness, Kate flees London for a ramshackle wayward cottage inherited from a great aunt she barely remembers. With its tumbling ivy and overgrown garden, the cottage is worlds away from the abusive partner who tormented Kate. Good for you, Kate. Get away from that piece of shit. But as she begins to suspect that her great aunt had a secret, one that lurks in the bones of the cottage hidden ever since the witch hunts of the 17th century. Ooh, okay. It always spans over like three different time frames. 
Interesting. 1619, Aletha is awaiting trial for the murder of a local farmer who was stampeded to death by his herd. Why is she on trial for it? Do they think she's a witch? As a girl, Aletha's mother taught her their magic, a kind not rooted in spell casting, but in deep knowledge of the natural world. But unusual women have always been deemed dangerous, and as the evidence for witchcraft, okay, is set against Aletha, she knows it will take all of her powers to maintain her freedom. 1942, as World War II rages, Violet is trapped in her family's grand, crumbling estate. Straightjacketed by societal convention, she longs for the robust education her brother receives, and for her mother, long deceased, who is rumored to have gone mad before her death. The only traces Violet has of her are a locket bearing the initial W, oh, for W for way, oh, <laughs> W and the word wayward. I was going to say W stand for wayward. It might. Weaving together the stories of three extraordinary women across five centuries. That's a tall order for a debut, I feel like. Amelia Hart's Wayward is an enthralling novel of female resilience and the transformative power of the natural world. Okay, so I'm curious if they're all three living in Wayward, like in this like cottage, not sure, but I'm kind of into it. 4.30, that's pretty good. Wait, first published February 2nd, you're already out? Ah, uh, so someone commented on one of my videos a couple, many months ago on a book of the month uh, video and they had mentioned that, cause I was like, I don't understand why it says first published this date and expected publication this date. And they said, which makes a lot of sense and thank you very much that, okay, so when it says first published, it could be that it was published in like the UK before it came over here. So I'm assuming that this one was perhaps published in like the UK, February 2nd. And now when I say over here, I'm in the US. So expected publication March 7th for the US. 4.30, I feel like that's pretty good. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised it's, it feels like this should be like an October release. Um, it feels very October-y, spooky, ish to me. So I'm I'm not sure if it's kind of like the right vibe right now to read it, but I'm still like really interested in it. Okay, so this one, I <laughs> literally saw the title of it, like when I scrolled down a second and I was like, what? Because, okay, so this one was on my like most anticipated books for 2023. This one is, it, it, it was calling me. I don't know why I think it's gonna, I've been kind of into the thrillers lately. In January, you guys picked um, What Lies in the Woods and that was pretty good for the thriller. And then last month you guys picked uh, Last Day of the Flower Bride, which I was very excited for. And you can see my spoiler talk for that one. Uh, it wasn't as good as I was hoping it was going to be. But I also picked The Writing Retreat and that was a thriller and uh, <laughs> that was goofy. Okay, so this one is The Soulmate. I love the cover. It's an early release. When an old acquaintance dies, it dredges up demons of the past that threaten to unravel a seemingly perfect marriage. Okay, psychological, rural, sad, marriage issues. Stan, content warning. Um, scenes depicting suicide. There is a cottage on a cliff. <laughs> Gabe and Pippa's dream home in a slippy coastal town, but their perfect house hides something sinister. The tall cliffs have become a popular spot for people to end their lives. Night after night, Gabe comes to the rescue, literally talking them off the ledge. Until he doesn't. When Pippa discovers Gabe knew the victim, the questions spiral. Did the victim jump? Was she pushed? And would Gabe, the love of Pippa's life, her soulmate, lie? As the perfect facade of their marriage begins to crack, the deepest and darkest secrets begin to unravel. <laughs> I remember reading this synopsis like months ago and being like, would he lie? <laughs> it's like, Oh, what are you lying about, Gabe? Okay, so this one's like a perfect example. This one was released like probably in the UK or whatever, October 25th of 2022. So it's been out for a while, but it's now being released in the US April 4th. So that's what makes it an early release um, for us at least. But the nice thing being it already has like, you know, almost 9,000 ratings. So you can kind of get like a good idea of how people are liking it, which is at 4.10. So that's not too shabby. 336 pages. 
Um, yeah, I'm excited for that one too. Oh, Australia. It was released in Australia in October and now is coming to the US in April. So there you go. Historical fiction, The Last Russian Doll. This epic story weaves one family's tragic splintering into the larger tapestry of Russia's turbulent 20th century. I feel like this is gonna be a heavy read. Oh, it's a debut, okay. Emotional, family drama, ooh, forbidden love, um, and non-linear timeline. Content warning, domestic abuse. In a faraway kingdom, in a long ago land, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I like how it's like a fairy tale almost, but probably not gonna be a fairy tale. A young girl lived happily in Moscow with her family, a sister, a father, an eccentric mother who liked to tell fairy tales and collect porcelain dolls. One summer night, everything changed and all that remained of the family were the girl and her mother. Now a decade later, studying at Oxford, Rosie has an English name, a loving fiance, promising future, but all she wants to understand and bury is is the past. After her mother dies, Rosie returns to Russia, armed with little more than her mother's strange folklore and a single key. What she discovers is a devastating family history that spans the 1917 revolution, the siege of Leningrad, Stalin's purges, and beyond. At the heart of the saga stands a young noblewoman, Tanya, as pretty as a porcelain doll, whose actions and love for an idealistic man will set off a sweeping story that reverberates across the century. Okay. I feel like this one would be an interesting one to like learn Russian history because I know nothing. 4.31. That's pretty high. Only 300 like ish ratings, but still like I feel like those who have read it have liked it. Contemporary fiction. Okay. Okay. Rootless. An unexpected pregnancy pushes a married couple into a raw and emotional exploration of what it is they truly want. I feel like this one's gonna be sad. Um, heavy. I don't really like when they're like very specifically like this is gonna be a heavy read. Buckle up. Slow build, marriage issues, mama drama. Content warning, self-harm. Hey, on the spring afternoon in London, Sam hops the stairs of his flat two at a time. There's missing 1300, missing from him and his wife, Efe's shared bank account, and his calls are going straight to voicemail. When he finally reaches someone, he learns Efe is nearly 5,000 miles away as their, what is going on? 5,000 miles away as their toddler looks around and asks, where's mommy? Okay, that has nothing to do with the synopsis. <laughs> when F.A. and Sam met, okay, what? When F.A. and Sam met as teens headed for university, it seemed everybody knew they were meant to be. F.A. newly arrived in the UK from Ghana, sinking under the weight of her parents' expectations, found comfort in the focused and idealistic Sam. He was stable, working toward a law career, had an unwavering vision for their future. A vision F.A. had now a decade later finds slightly insufferable. <laughs> You're insufferable, Sam. From the outside, they're the picture-perfect couple everyone imagined, but there are cracks in the frame. Oh, I like how they, how they phrased that. There's cracks in the frame. When F.A. and Sam are faced with an unplanned pregnancy, they find themselves on opposing sides. Fatherhood is everything he dreamed of, but F.A. feels stuck in a nightmare. When a new revelation emerged, they're forced to confront just how radically different they want their lives to be. Already swallowed by the demands of motherhood and feeling the dreams she had slipped away. Oh, she got pregnant again. Wait, did she get pregnant again and then disappeared? That's what I'm thinking. It seems like she got pregnant again and then disappeared and she already had a toddler that's like, where's mommy? Ooh, 4.23, that's pretty good. Again, we're questioning if it's coming out April 11th or March 7th, <laughs> 368 pages. Seems like a very, very interesting one. I don't love the fact that it, they are very specifically saying it's gonna be heavy and a slow build, but I think the story sounds interesting. Okay, so this is another one that has been like floating around and has been on my radar. So I'm actually, I'm kind of excited about this one too. Um, okay, so this is a fantasy, The Adventures of Amina. I'm not gonna pronounce all that because I'm terrible at pronouncing things. This swashbuckling pirate captain's last hurrah will have you clutching your spyglass ready to hit the si high seas. Um, I know that this one's a part of a series. I don't know how long the series is going to be and I haven't read anything else by this author, but obviously it says it's a re repeat author. But again, 
I don't know what the other books were by this author. Oh yeah, first in the series, okay. Action Packed, Quest, and okay, so it's long, so 400 plus pages. Amina should be content after a storied and scandalous career as one of the Indian's o Indian Ocean's most notorious pirates. She's, <laughs> I love that. She survived backstabbing rogues, vengeful merchant pirates, several husbands, and one actual demon to retire peacefully with her family, with motherhood, absolutely nothing that hints of the supernatural. <laughs> But when she's tracked down by the obscenely wealthy mother of a former crewman, she's offered a job no bandit could refuse. Retrieve her comrade's kidnapped daughter for a kingly sum. The chance to have one last adventure with her crew, do right by an old friend, and win a fortune that will secure her family's future forever? It seems like such an obvious choice that it must be God's will. Yet the deeper Amina dives, the more it becomes alarmingly clear there's more to this job and the girl's disappearance than what she was led to believe. For there's always a risk in wanting to become a legend, to seize one last chance at glory to save her just a little bit more power, and the price might be your very soul. I have seen this one kind of like been floating around a lot. Um, I think that like there's kind of like some hype around this one. I don't feel like the synopsis does a great job of telling us what's going to be happening in this 400 plus page book. Oh, okay. The, oof. 496 pages. Chonky. Um, fantasy, historical fiction, adult, pirates, <laughs> adventure. Um, okay. So, so far, like the ratings are killer. Um, 4.46, again, big boy, 496 pages, um, coming out February 28th. Okay. So, pretty much almost already out. I'm just very curious by this one. I don't know if I'm like ready to commit to like a very long series, but I'm still very curious by it. Um, okay, last one is a horror book. Um, yeah, I like the cover. It looks very horror-esque. A woman is fleeing past Sin's attempts to forge a new life homesteading Montana's harsh plains. Okay, Adelaide Henry carries an enormous trunk with her wherever she goes. It's locked at all times because when the trunk is open, people around her... <laughs> people around her start to disappear! <laughs> what? What's happening? The year is 1914. Adelaide is in trouble. Her secret Sin killed her parents and forced her to flee her hometown in California in a hellfire rush ready to make her way to Montana as a homesteader. Dragging the trunk with her at every stop, she will be one of the lone women taking advantage of the government's offer of free land for those who can cultivate it. Except for Adelaide isn't alone, and the secret she's tried so desperately to lock away might be the only thing keeping her alive. Okay, that gave me no information about what's going on in this book. Is this like a, is this, does this have like a fantasy aspect to it? I'm very confused. Okay, 4.28, um, coming out the end of March. Oh, 304 pages, that is so short for all of the questions that I have from that synopsis. Supernatural, this person said supernatural horror. What is in your trunk? So let's pretend I'm making this my book of the month, which I'm not because you guys get to pick, but let's see what the add-ons, if there's anything special in the add-ons. Uh, Pineapple Street, that looks new. I have some questions for you. That looks new. Hello Beautiful, that looks new. Uh, ugh, Last Hill of the Friar. <laughs> I already have that one. Um, nothing that like is super jumping out at me personally that I'm like, ooh, I've been looking for that, you know? Because last month, The Last Tale of the Flower Bride, I was like, oh my God, I've been waiting for that book. <laughs> but nothing that I'm like super, super like, oh my God, you know? Okay, so seven picks this month. And I kind of feel like there are some bangers in that uh, selection that Book of the Month did. Super, super curious to see what you guys are going to be picking for the spoiler talk this month. So in the poll, it will only allow me to put five options. So out of the seven, I'm going to pick the five that call to me the most. And then you guys can pick which one I am going to read for this month and do a spoiler talk on. So that poll will be live for 24 hours after it's initially posted. So don't forget to vote in the poll and decide my reading fates. I also wanted to take a minute and thank you guys so much. We passed over a thousand subscribers, which I just am like blown away by. I can't even imagine like 
over a thousand people subscribing to my channel and being like, oh, wanting to like talk books with me. Like it just makes me so happy. Um, but yeah, I love you guys and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.